All right, well, at the start of this press conference, I shared a um, interesting stat with uh, Jeff and Rick that I want to share with you guys as well. This is the 100th win for the number 24. Um, your reaction to that? Yeah, we were uh, we were well aware <laughs> on the team. Um, you know, it was kind of that hump we wanted to get over pretty quick. I think I was I was a little bit anxious ab about it. Um, you know, getting those two wins early in the year and then and then trying to get a third is is tough. You know, in the sport, everyone is so competitive as we saw today. You know, you had four or five cars within you know a chance for the lead. So um, yeah, just good to get over that hump and and uh, good to get that. Um, monumental win for the number 24. It's been a really special uh, number to me already. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, yeah, like you said, we, we were we were well aware um, and working on it, you know, since Phoenix. But, um, yeah, it's, that number is iconic. And I mean, sitting next to the two that just, just left here is, uh, you know, you still got to pinch yourself to, to know you're working for them, with them, and, uh, and, and winning races on the 24. So um, I was proud to, proud to get 100, one number 100. All right, we're going to start in the middle here with Chris and then come up to Mike. Chris Weaver, WGHP Fox 8 High Point. This is for both of you. You can both answer a little bit of this. What is it about each other that has you finding where you are now, three wins this year? Uh, what do you see in each other that encourages the other, and, and how's all that work? Um, I think that we just at our core we trust each other you know in the decisions that we make so i think that that goes a long way in this sport because a lot of times even if we don't make the right decision the right choice on a restart or the right um you know adjustment or whatever like we finally we get back to where we uh need to be because of that trust so i think that's what what it takes yeah the trust and then i think each one of us has picked each other up at different times different parts of the team has picked each other up all year long so you prove that you know, it's a team, so it's uh, we we've known that we've tried to build that culture now in year three, but um, it's uh, it's getting there for sure. All right, we'll come up here to Mike and then go back to Pete. Mike Embry, NBC. William, were you aware that Harvick's car was <coughs> somewhat wounded there before the final restart, and did that factor into how you raced at all? Uh, no, but I was aware that the guys behind me w had some damage. So I was kind of picking a little bit based on that, but also the history of how each person races. So, you know, every restart's different. You gotta, you know, understand the characters around you. And um, I felt like we went with the decision that um, obviously put a little bit in the hands of the people around us, but also was, I would say in my head, coming to the restart was 75% the right, the right choice. So um, I spent a lot of time debating in my head you have a lot of time to figure it out but i felt like i made the the decision that made the most sense you had a really good view of all the crazy stuff happening at the front there over the last 20 laps or so a and it seemed that the green flag you really took off to get away from harvick which is obviously what you want to do but were you concerned that he might attempt something that the other guys had racing for first over those last laps um no, because I feel like, I mean, he's going to do whatever he can to to win, obviously, but it does matter in the sport how you race others. And, um, you know, I think with the one, like, you know, he had done that move earlier in the race and um, it had come back his way. And then and then on that restart with, you know, him, them two, by, you know, lined up in front of me that I kind of knew what to expect. So that was part of our decision making there. And then coming to that final restart, you have to kind of put that in the memory bank and think about, okay, who are the people that I'm up against in this situation? And um, we try to make the best decision based on that. Hey, Pete. Hey there, Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. William, I, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Um, were you prepared before that next to last restart that, that Kyle and Ross were probably, could get into a situation like that and so you were prepared to just avoid whatever, whatever situation they were in. Uh, yeah, we talked about it. You know that all those things, like emotions, if they factor into decisions, are important for us. So um, we talked as soon as the caution came out of what we thought was going to happen. And Rudy did a great job filling me in. Um, obviously, I can't listen, but I can 
assume based on all the information. So we try to make the best decisions, and I felt like today we, you know, we, we grinded our way through this race. I mean, it was a tough, tough race for us, but we kept our heads in it, and that's what made us make uh, good calls at the end to get us in a position. I mean, I don't think we really thought we could win in the first restart when there was that big wreck. Then we started to get a glimmer of hope, and then we started to go to work on, okay, what are the things we yeah. need to do to, to win it? And I also wanted to know how much did – last year's finish here kind of affect you coming in this year did you think about it a lot this weekend or did you just put it out of your mind no no i don't i mean i think i came here being excited to race at darlington i felt like it would be a tough weekend because of you know some of our fall off the previous week so i was hopeful that we worked on it and we did and we had a good long run car um you know so i was just kind of thinking about those things i mean just the just really the things that, that matter to us and our team. Um, and we went out and put together a great day. I mean, it wasn't going to be the day we hoped for, um, but that's how it goes sometimes. And that's kind of what we said on the radio. We're like, man, we surprise ourselves. All right, we're going to go up to the press box for a question from Jim Utter. Go ahead with your question. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. Uh, congrats, Lincoln. Uh, when you first got out of the car, Yeah, I think I'm just honest with myself and um, reflective, and I felt like I feel like I'm a different person than I was when I stepped in the car, and it was a lot of pressure, you know, driving the 24. No matter what way you slice it, you know, it's it's a uh, a big number and has a lot of meaning, and being with a team like this, so um, so yeah, I feel like I'm that growth process happened, and I don't really look back and say, you know, I don't compare myself to then, so. Um, and I have different people around me that really know me. So uh, it's just, it's great what we built. Um, and yeah, it's different. Any additional questions up in the press box? No. All right, we're going to go to Bob Pockris. Bob Pockris, Fox Sports. Uh, w William, last year I want to say you won two in the first eight races and then didn't win again. So I'm curious. Thanks how for the reminder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious if that, those thoughts start going through your head after two early wins this year, and then I mean I don't want to say that ten races is a long or nine races is a long winless streak, but like did you feel that this year was going any different than after your two wins last year? For sure. I mean I think we had kind of a a chip, you know, and and a little bit of just um, trying not to let that happen again, and so we've we've been probably overexerting ourselves a little bit just to make sure that we don't repeat and I think now we're we're safely in a groove here where you know we got to continue our processes continue what got us here um but it's it's definitely feels different than what we had last year where I felt like after we won those couple races we were kind of you know we had just kind of a false confidence I think and uh we've learned from that I have and uh, I don't I don't intend on doing that again go to Jordan from Bianca the Athletic, uh, start both of you, I guess. Do you guys, you look at the stats this year, laps led, you know, average running position, that kind of thing, stage wins. Do, do you guys feel like you, you should have more wins than you have right now? I mean, this is this is the hardest form of motorsport in North, Amer North America. I mean, it's 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 hard. They, you know, we run up front and we win, you know, lead a lot of laps and put ourselves in position, but you don't always win, you know, so we'd, we'd like to win more, but... It, to me, it's the process. It's how do you put yourself in a spot to, to practice well and then qualify well and then race well and lead laps. And that's what we're doing week in and week out, no matter the type of track. And uh, that's what we didn't have last year. You know, we kind of – Atlanta's a win. We, you know, it was, it was what it was, and Martinsville's on its own. And, and a night race, it was 40 degrees, you know. So we weren't <coughs> dominating being in the top three or four. But, we, you know, we consistently have the best running position – anybody in the series and that's kind of that's what we're doing you don't always win those races unfortunately so um i i just want to know how to do the you know that our team can can compete like that because if you do that and you put yourself in a position to win you're gonna you're gonna win the races like today where we weren't the best car but we were close 
Um, no, I mean, Richmond was hard to swallow because we, you know, think our MO together is get the best finish of, that we can. And at Richmond, you know, we went from battling Martin for the win, probably going to finish, maybe going to finish second, and then go to 24. So that one was the hardest of the year to kind of go back on Monday and be like, man, what happened? But, um, yeah, other than that, I mean, I don't know. Races can go any, any way, I feel like, but certainly the – statistics show which i'm a big stats guys i look at you know our running position like he said and uh, stage points and it looks pretty good so we just gotta keep the process that we have going because it's obviously working you you look at the last few years harvick in 20 um, larson in 21 you could throw hamlin in that mix as well there's basically a group of guys that have kind of dominated and kind of asserted themselves way clear of everyone else do you feel like you guys are capable of that and that's your ceiling um i think if we I mean, I think we'll look back at today and think about the things we could do better, and I think that's gonna that's how we're going to get better. And I think when we come back here in the fall, if we apply all those things. Um, so, yeah, I think it's – we're on a good trajectory, but I don't, I don't really look at, like, potential as much as I just look at, okay, how can we improve. So there's still a lot to do, but think about North Wilkes, where I got a late model race on Tuesday, so I'm going to think about that. All right, Rudy, we know you have to get to inspection. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate yeah, it, and you. congratulations. All right, we're going to go back to Chris. Chris, Fox 8, WGHP High Point again. Um, you brought it up. You're going to Wilkesboro Tuesday night to race in the late model races. What do you think the fans' reaction is going to be to being back in that place and watching you and a bunch of other cup drivers Tuesday and Wednesday night? And what do you expect out of the race leading into the weekend to the, into the uh, All Star race? Yeah, I mean the track looks gorgeous. I think it it just really looks nice. The whole the whole layout of the place uh, has that feel of kind of a Wrigley Field or um, you know just a historic place that has a new newness to it. Um, so I'm I'm excited for it. I think the late model race will kind of get me ready running the truck race after that and then running the cup race on Sunday. So lots to do and feel like we don't really know what we're getting into yet. So we got to get, I don't know, I think I practiced at 1 o'clock on Tuesday. So I'll tell you after that. <laughs> to Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, we kind of touched on this maybe a little bit the other day, uh, kind of talking about the fighting and stuff. But you look at with Ross and everything today, um, what would it take for you to, to – maybe want to confront him and send a message that this is you know uh, this isn't how you want to be raced I mean I gotta preface it with honestly Ross and I raced pretty good so um you know I think he was a little bit better than me at times today and um you know we kind of traded positions here and there but I do think some of the things I've seen feel like they're a little bit over the line and I feel like that's whatever that line is has to kind of come back down just a little bit i mean there's there's a certain point when wrecking is just not the answer so i don't know what that would um entail but but yeah you just you know there's a line right like we all have pedals and steering wheels so um there's a way to uh to give it back and um i just saw a lot of wrecking today so i didn't really like that i i thought we had some really good cars out there and uh could have maybe settled it out that way Go to Bob. Uh, did you anticipate Ross trying to pinch Kyle up high? And so were you like thinking, okay, I'm going to stay at probably as low as I can and <laughs> can keep <laughs> momentum uh, on that restart? Yeah, we talked about it on the um, under the caution. We talked about just what was going on and whether we felt like that was going to come into play again. Um, I was surprised that the that Ross got the lead. Um, on the the restart, I guess they were really close side by side, so he got the lead. And then, uh, you know, I when he chose the bottom, I wasn't surprised. Um, so I chose the bottom too. But I felt like what I really felt like was going to happen was somebody on the top was going to lose momentum because he was going to take that line away. And I didn't think that they would wreck, but um, obviously it happened. And um, you know, we we rolled on by. I was kind of hopeful that they would get choked up, and I'd just go to the bottom three wide and uh, clear them all. Any additional questions for William? Kelly?
KellyCrandallRacer.com. William, so you said you're a stats guy, so you know where you stack up against the competition, but do you feel like this team gets the respect or gets recognized as it should for what you guys are doing and where you, you should stack up in this garage? Um, I mean, I've heard a lot of different opinions, you know, um, but I think as a team, I think, and statistically, I feel like we're right where we need to be. So um, there's a couple other guys that are really close um, or even a little bit better in some categories. Um, you know, uh, Kyle has been really strong. I feel like he's really fast on some of the, some of the bigger tracks. Um, Ross has good stats. And so, yeah, I look at all that stuff, you know, lap sled, um, average running position, all those things. So I feel like in most of the things I've looked at, I feel like, feel like we're pretty good. I do have a couple areas that I feel like we could improve uh, and we'll keep working on. Do you feel like you're a top five driver in this garage right now? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Definitely definitely that. It's just it's really hard to separate at the top. I feel like there's a, a few guys that could win um, every week. So being in that little bit is uh, is tough, but you know sometimes they go your way and you just try to stay, stay up there in, in contention. <laughs> what about winning at Darlington? This is a place that, of course, gets a lot of recognition for how tough it is and there's always talk coming into e every Darlington race weekend that, you know, experience is going to win out. You're still a relatively younger guy, but w so what does winning at Darlington say or how, or how, what does it mean? Yeah, it's, um, it's a track that takes a lot of patience, but also aggression. Like you can't, you can't leave, you can't run at 90%. You've got to run at 98 or 99, but that edge is really close. And I feel like that's what catches young guys out as they, at least for me, like I made mistakes and then try to back off and drive easier and it just doesn't work. So it's one of those places you have to be kind of on that edge and, um, you know, just, just have to really cut it close, but that's what makes speed, but also being patient enough to not overstep that edge. Cause you really can't, you know, you can maybe do it a couple times, but, uh, it's tough. Um, it's up there for sure. I mean, Probably not the, the win that sticks out just of, you know, dominating the race or anything like that. But um, being up front, being in contention, and, and based on the past history we've had here, I think it, it definitely, you know, it stacks up pretty high. All right, William, thank you and congratulations. Appreciate it.